Fellow gamers, do you ever just feel a tad nostalgic so you start scrolling through your old social media just for funsies? And you look at your old posts or photos or whatever and you're like, whoa, look at this, look at that. I can't believe I took my middle school breakup that seriously. <laughs> wow, the amount of friends in my inner circle have really slashed in half since uh, high school, maybe even more than that. Yeah, I did that the other day, except admittedly, my walk down memory lane is probably more cringe-filled than the average person's. Okay, I'm, do I'm done with the- I'm done with my gamer look right now, okay? I'm gonna take- I'm gonna take it off. Ugh. My name is Sir Sugarme, and I make a lot of jokes on my channel about how I was, and still am, a Tumblr user. Oh, come on, Ooh, again? We heard Get that one already. Joke. But unfortunately, the cringe does not end there, because you see, in my middle school and high school days, I also used to be a part of DeviantArt.com. And there's a lot we can talk about regarding DeviantArt. From the iconic MS Paint, please do not steal OCs, to ironically all the art theft, to the unfortunate strange fetish art that plagues the platform. But today, I'd like to talk about one specific user who inspired me and a lot of other budding artists in the early 2010s. And his username was Unknown Person. And who the hell is Unknown Person? Well, if you're deep in fandom slash fan art spaces, chances are you've probably seen this guy. Or maybe that guy. And if you've seen either of those two characters, well, those are Unknown's original characters. And they strangely still have a strong root in niche online spaces, despite being characters from nearly two decades ago. His animations and characters were famous throughout the DeviantArt space and served as an inspiration for some modern day animators. And it's pretty wild because I thought this guy was more so a product of his time, but lately a brand new fan base for his work has been blooming on TikTok. And I think that's pretty noteworthy. He's just all in all super inspirational and I've spent half of my life hunting down his work on social media. So I thought I'd share a little insight on the unknown person history I've recorded over the years. Just a little warning as well, I kind of really nerd out and fangirl in this video and say a lot of acronyms and talk quite fast. And while I can't go back in time and slow myself down, I will at least leave my list of acronyms in the description below. But anyway, let's get started on my unknown person history deep dive. As his username implies, not much was really known about Unknown Person when he first entered DeviantArt in 2004. When he first joined, he made your run-of-the-mill amateur quality fan art, specifically a lot for Danny Phantom and a number of other Nickelodeon shows. Using the Wayback Machine, I found a couple of fun blog posts from him from 2005, asking people what the difference was between a doujin and a fanzine, and announcing that he had discovered a cool new anime called Full Metal Alchemist. Ah, uh, the innocence of the 2000s. However, those were his early days. He wouldn't find actual notoriety within the DA space until 2007, when he entered an OCT, or Original Character Tournament, with his character Climber, a gullible and naive stuffed mannequin who came from a theme park called Castle of Nations, where all of the resident statues and mannequins were sentient thanks to the park's magic. Also, Climber drew on his own eyes with mud, and that's why they're a little wonky. If you've never heard of the concept of OCTs before, basically some someone will create an OCT by providing some sort of starting prompt. Like, let's say that there is an evil wizard man who kidnaps a bunch of people and forces them to duke it out battle royale style, and the winner gets one wish granted. Or like, there's some lonesome billionaire on his deathbed who would just love to give away his fortune, but he's also kind of a psychopath so he also hosts a battle royale and the winner gets to receive his fortune. Something like that. I don't know, I'm not a good writer, that's why I never hosted an OCT, okay? But but you get the idea, right? You essentially create a prompt to host a battle royale, and the creator of the OCT typically also chooses a panel of judges, which usually consists of the creator's close friends or other popular artists within their online ecosystem. After providing the prompt, that's when the artist will audition for the OCT, and usually that entails the artist drawing their character either receiving the invitation or getting abducted or kidnapped or whatever, depending on the prompt, and usually showcasing how their character is reacting to getting thrust into or choosing to participate in this tournament. And based on how the judges like the entries, they are the ones who get to decide who competes. After that, the creator of the OCT and the judges will choose which artists get to compete against each other for the first round, and then the artists will have to make a comic of their OC fighting their opponent's OC, and usually they have an allotted amount of time to make that comic, usually about either one week to a month. And once all entries are submitted, the judges essentially decide who gets to move on to the next round. And this process pretty much continues until there are only two artists standing who duke it out in one artistically and narratively epic comic 
battle. All in all, OCTs were just a really fun way to engage the artist community. Like role-playing, but with guaranteed violence. There was this one video I watched that described it as like a D&D campaign, and yeah, that sounds pretty accurate to me. And then usually at the end of the tournament, the winner would receive either like a free commission from the OCT host or from the other artists who entered the tournament, though I'm not sure if that was like every OCT because in reality I only kept track of like maybe three and a half. And if you are an artist of the modern era, you might be thinking, wow, that sounds like a lot of work and dedication to put in for just a free commission. Did they not get like money or anything like that? And to that I say, uh, times were just different back then. Back then, adults could afford to have non-monetized hobbies outside of work, and some of the competitors were students who wanted the exposure and or didn't need to have a full-time job yet. And also, online spaces were just that much more engaging back then. People were so excited to do this shit for free, and people like me were happy to watch it all unfold. It just had to be there. It was just truly such a different space back then. But my own reminiscing aside, so the thing with OCTs is that you can actually submit any type of medium unless otherwise specified. So you could potentially submit writing, or a comic, or even a short film of you and your buddies. But more often than not, people usually submitted comics. But see, that's where Unknown Person set himself apart. For his first audition and first round of his first OCT, Endzone, he did submit comics like everyone else. And he won his first round by essentially having Climber win a dance battle against his opponent. However, he would not be able to rely on that gimmick again. And for the second round and beyond, Climber would actually have to fight. And Unknown Person Person decided that animating the fight through flash animation would be his best bet in creating a really engaging entry, and boy was he f***ing right. <laughs> Yuppie's entry for his second round was, I believe, his very first attempt at animation, which is f***ing amazing. Like, are you kidding me? This shit had the same hype as those stick figure fight animations that, like, took over the early internet space in the mid-2000s. This was considered pretty good for the era of Flash animation, and doubly good especially because it is his first attempt. And what makes it extra amazing is that Unknown managed to animate each of his entries for Climber within two Two to three weeks. His animations, along with some other artists, inspired me to try my hand at flash animation when I was a kid. And you want to know what I made within like two to three weeks? Um, and what would that be? <laughs> Wait there. Mimi. Yeah, that shit was not good. <laughs> sure, I was only like 13 or 14 at the time of animating that, but like... <laughs> be grateful that I showed you my shitty animation. But anyway, yeah, so my shitty animation that took me two to three weeks to make was only like about a minute long. I don't know exactly how long. I don't want to watch it again. It physically hurts me, okay? <laughs> but Unknown's flash animations for Endzone were like five to ten minutes long. Let me repeat that. He was creating five to ten minutes worth of animation in less than a month. How, how is he putting in these hours? Does he work at a f***ing anime studio or some shit? Like, who does that? Mad lad. But I didn't even mention that he also had bonus content. He usually accompanied his flash animations with a little comic as either a prologue or an epilogue, sometimes even both. And within the flash animations, he also had cut content and extras. And of course, for whatever reason, a lot of people who submitted flash animations in OCTs also included an explanations page where they wrapped up any lingering questions or potential questions people might have about the logic. And keep in mind too that a lot of this work also involved reading up on your opponent's lore and character sheet and doing research on that. During the final round of Endzone, Climber fights against a cockney chimney sweep named Chimbley, meaning Unknown had to do research on cockney accents and their unique slang, which is even more work on top of that already gargantuan pile of work. And during that time, Unknown Person's English wasn't even that great yet. More on that later. 
basically what I'm trying to say is the amount of time and dedication he put into these OCT entries was freaking godly. And thankfully, it paid off because he emerged from the end zone OCT as the winner and left end zone with a huge fan base that now followed him because they loved his OC and the world that he crafted. A lot of people just really adored Clymer as a character because of his ignorance of the world outside of Castle of Nations and his overall sweetness and desire to not hurt people despite him being part of a battle royale. Plus, the obvious, animations were just really cool and very unique in a tournament full of predominantly comics. Oh my god, my greasy hair will not stay all the way. Another aspect that drew people in was the interesting lore that is subtly hinted at throughout the animations and comics. All throughout Endzone, we see Clymer progressively struggle with movement, and it's implied that this is because he has been away from his residential theme park for too long. We also see him experience more frequent flashbacks of his friend Clarice, a human girl who is not really liked by the other mannequins and statues of the park, but befriends Clymer, probably due to his kind and friendly nature. And Unknown was particularly good at holding his audience's attention and intrigue. He always dropped these scattered crumbs of interesting lore that left many wanting to find out more, myself included. And the fact that he didn't post that often either drove people insane and had people revisit his old comics and animations, trying to pinpoint little pockets of lore, seeing if they can string together theories, like game theory style. There were just so many questions and mysteries that people were trying to find out. How did the theme park's magic work? Why is Clymer the only cloth mannequin in the park? Who the hell is this character that we see in Castle of Nations and is she talking to a literal castle? Where did Clarice go and why was she so important to Clymer? So many fans had so many questions about Clymer and his lore and the prospect of receiving more animated content for the Castle of Nations series was so exciting. And then, unknown person entered his next OCT. Carl, that kills people! Oh, oh. Law of Talos, would arguably his most popular character, Carl. Law of Talos was huge. It has the reputation of being the most hype OCT in all of OCT history. And Carl, God, he was so legendary. So legendary that at the time it did make some contestants and LOT followers a little salty that Carl stole the show, especially because Carl fans were admittedly obnoxiously vocal and acted like the other characters competing in Law of Talos didn't exist. But I don't really want to get into that in this video. And also, you know, I wasn't involved in the drama, so it's not really my place. Let's just focus on Carl. Now, Carl is another Castle of Nations character, but in contrast to the sweet and innocent climber, Carl is a misanthropic resin statue who likes to put on a charming front, but in reality, he would kill like literally anything that moves. But people loved him. He cracked lame jokes when he fought, he had a tragic backstory involving a girl named Rachel, and it's implied that he had fond feelings for her, but she like betrayed him somehow, and that spurred on his hatred for mankind. He loved playing the violin and for the dear love of God, don't take away his ability to play violin because otherwise he can kill you. He had a cool raven ally named Arma who kind of served as his support and scout and could also shapeshift and turn herself into a weaponized extension of his limbs. Honestly, I thought Arma was really freaking cool. But anyway, the fans ate that shit up, myself included. Yeah, whereas I feel like Climber would be like a yeah. pathetic meow meow in today's time, Carl would definitely be an evil Tumblr sexy man. Because seriously, so many fans thirsted and still thirst after Carl. I mean, for fuck's sake, he's listed in Sexypedia. Sorry, the camera angle and I look slightly different here because I'm filming this post-massage appointment, also glasses because they messed up my eye makeup. Anyway, I was so attached to this character when I was a kid because just like how modern day has been hotel fans love Alistair for being a charismatic, grinning, chaotic, evil character, 13-year-old me also loved Carl for that same reason. Has been hotel fans do not at me, I do not go here, I I am just regurgitating what I see on Tumblr. I cannot tell you 
how many angsty three days grace AMVs I watched with this character. Specifically the song I Hate Everything About You, often featuring clips of both Carl and Rachel. I am so sad. I tried to search for this AMV but I could not find it anywhere for the life of me. I feel like they deleted it. I gotta start saving all my favorite old AMVs before they become lost media. But yeah, Carl resonated with angsty tweenage me so much. I seriously sat in my room at the ripe age of 12 teen being like, my Catholic Filipino family could never understand how deep this character is. I swear, I don't know what it is about teens and tweens and I'm angsty crazy. characters or evil it's fun sad. characters like it's these, sad. but anyway. And because of his experience with animating Climber and Endzone, Unknown's improved animation, in combination with Carl's personality and backstory being more attuned to Unknown's audience, as well as DeviantArt user Mr. T and Crumpets's quirky man voice acting, drew in an even bigger fan base for UP. They even made an animated entry, I think, for their audition as opposed to just a comic. Or at least I think this was part of the audition. It could also just be extra content or how we say a spectator entry in the OCT world. So that's Carl. Now, in regards to Law of Talos, Law of Talos was a more engaging OCT for both unknown fans and general fans of OCTs because this OCT was invite only, meaning we had some pretty high quality art and characters. And I think I do remember as a kid, I was way more interested in the characters of Law of Talos as opposed to the characters in Endzone where I really only cared about Climber and Chimbley. I mean, in Law of Talos, Carl faced against Mizuno, a fish boy who had a voice in his head, and Steffi, a hot-headed young engineer, Relic, the vampire, and for the second to final round, he fought, uh, oh my god, he fought against Chimbley again. <laughs> I feel really bad for the creator of Chimbley, who goes by the name of Iris J. Imagine having to fight the same damn artist in another OCT and then losing again. Uh, like, kill me. <laughs> Now, a bit of a tangent regarding Chimbley. I'm not sure if Iris J thought she was going to lose because she had already lost to Unknown before in Endzone, or if she was just trying to get creative and figure out a way she could compete with his epic animations, but she decided to have some absolute fun with her entry. If I'm remembering correctly, I believe she was just a student at the Savannah College of Art and Design during this time, so she took her fellow SCAD friends and colleagues and made a very funny homemade live action short film for her entry. Wow, I can't believe I made it to the river without running to one more loony contestant. A huge deviation from the comics she'd normally make. It was honestly pretty hilarious and did receive a lot of praise from fans, if I remember correctly. Her old accounts at this point have been sweeped, I'm guessing because she did enter this tournament before she transitioned and just probably did not want her dead name sprawled across every art piece and everything like that. And of course, Carl and Unknown ended up winning, but seriously, nothing to knock on Iris J's art. Her comics of Chimbley were pretty great and pretty funny. One last Chimbley side note, if you're interested in reading the very hard to find original Chimbley comics, I believe Iris J has some archived on her Patreon if you feel like supporting a very cool creator. The Chimbley comics at this point are practically lost media, so I'd say pretty good deal. Now, despite Carl's popularity throughout the span of the OCT, Unknown actually did end up losing this one. In the last round, Carl is up against these characters, Annie and Professor Ginger, created by DA user Terrible Nerd. Terrible Nerd, who operated under the username Black Lillian at the time, won the competition because according to the judges, she had the more compelling storyline and conclusive ending. So unfortunately, while the animated entry by Unknown Person was more popular with the fans, it technically does not count as canon to the Law of Talos lore since Unknown Person did lose. It's kind of funny because despite Unknown Person's fame within the DeviantArt OCT space, he actually only won one OCT, Endzone. Besides that one and Law of Talos, he did compete in a few other OCTs, one of them being Samurai Duelers League. Wait a minute, why the hell does that say Ragore at the top? What the hell's a Ragore? Where he competed with Kuraima Manikin, a Japanified, humanized version of Climber, essentially. You know, Kuraima Manikin, Climber Mannequin, yeah. I don't know how far he got in this OCT because for the life of me, I cannot find any of that information 
anywhere. It was at this point I was getting really frustrated with all the broken links and images on DeviantArt. And also, admittedly, I was getting impatient with the clunkiness of the Wayback Machine. Sorry about that, guys. I assume UP didn't get that far, though, considering I was only ever able to find one Flash animation and one comic entry for that OCT. The other OCT he entered was Burning Avalon, and this time it was with an entirely new character named Weetzi, who was completely unrelated to the Castle of Nations series, and very much based on Aztec, sorry, not Aztec, Mexica, I think, culture. I don't think I ever saw much on UP's DA page regarding Weetzi save for his reference sheet, and that's because UP's involvement in the Burning Avalon OCT was in collaboration with an artist named Tickety Talk. Her character, Akira, was I believe supposed to be based on Haitian culture, as we do see her speaking Creole in the comics. Also, sorry if I pronounce anything wrong, I am merely an Americanized brown person. I'm not exactly sure how UP's and Tickety Talk's collab worked, but you can definitely tell who drew what if you read the comics. I didn't keep track of that OCT because I didn't really know about it when it was happening. Plus, I think during that time, I was starting to grow out of DeviantArt, or at least a community I was personally surrounded by. But I did hear that UP, I think, won second place. And I also have to say, I have a feeling that Unknown chose to collab with another artist for that OCT because he was busy with other professional projects. Again, more on that later. But you know, despite me not hearing much about Burning Avalon when it happened during those early 2010s, it seems to have a little fan base on TikTok from those young fans I mentioned earlier. To be honest, I actually heard slash learned more about that OCT from them. Pretty neat how that happens, honestly. Thank you, TikTok fanbase. During his last remaining days on DA, Unknown would post a few Castle of Nations comics, a ref sheet for TG, another character from the CON storyline, and a few non-Castle artworks here and there. Which, you know, fans absolutely ate all of that shit up. But it was also clear that he was starting to transition out of the DA space, as was I. And as I transitioned out of DeviantArt and into the arms of Tumblr.com, so did Mr. UP. And man, were unknown person fans ecstatic to find him there. I want to say that this was the next social media he jumped onto after DA, and his posts were a real treat to Castle of Nations fans. He posted some extra juicy, lore-filled, ship-filled content for his characters, he answered some lingering lore questions as well as some fun ones, and he also introduced some new characters that we had never seen before, like Masthead, and some non-Castle ones like this little guy named Hugh and tired college guy named Jay. And holy shit, I didn't realize he also had a blog spot. What the f Yeah, apparently he also had a blog spot that he was super quiet about, save for one post on Tumblr, where he was hoarding even more Castle of Nations art, as well as an unfinished Samurai Duelers League comic, but I care a little more about the canon events. See, now the downside to Unknown Person is it is very frustrating if you are an obsessive fan like me, trying to piece together Castle of Nations lore, because Unknown Person had this habit of creating like different social media accounts, posting minimally for like a couple of years, and then disappearing. Like I get it man, like he has his own life, I'm not saying that like he should drop everything to like make Castle of Nations for me. You know, it's just like one of those like fan things that you just hold inside. But also too, it, whenever you're a fan star for content, it does make finding the content that much more special. But anyway, there's some pretty neat finds on his blog spot, including these what look like animation frames for a castle series. But who knows if that was ever finished because the blog spot only had active uploads from 2009 to 2010, and then it was inactive, in true unknown person fashion. And it wasn't looking good for his Tumblr either because his posting was starting to become more infrequent, switching from like a couple times a year to once a year. No, unknown person, I know what that means. Don't go inactive again, I'm begging you. Don't keep us in the dark. Yeah, despite my internal screams, eventually the post completely halted in 2017, with his very last three posts containing two animation tests for another series of his called Graveyard Shift, and one last art for his Graveyard Shift character, Rick. And it seemed like we would never figure out who this guy really was, nor what actually happened to the Castle of Nations gang. And I think around this time in my life, I had just accepted that I would never be able to uncover these mysteries. I mean, Unknown was just notoriously conservative when it came to revealing information about himself or his series. And I wasn't about to take any illegal measures. Plus, I was getting quite busy with entering college myself during that time, so I decided to close the book on the Unknown Person case.
Goodbye, Carl. Goodbye, Climber. Goodbye, Rachel. Goodbye, Clarice. Jackie. Dahlia. Arma. I suppose everything has to end at some point. I'll miss you guys. Thank you for everything. Wait a minute. This guy has a Twitter? And his name is Carlos? So, Carlos Schwepper, 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 is the real identity of an unknown person. He grew up in an undisclosed city in Santa Catarina in Brazil, and he attended the Federal University of Santa Catarina and graduated with a bachelor's degree in graphic design. Sorry if I say that weird, my Japanese and Filipino accent are battling each other and it's coming out really weird. The university's wiki page explains that it's one of the leading universities in Brazil and the sixth best university in all of Latin America. It's apparently super hard to get accepted into this college considering the application process consists of several written tests over a span of two to three days and less than 15% of all applicants actually get in. What this tells me is that unknown is a fucking goat. After receiving his degree in Santa Catarina, he moved on to Sheridan College up in Canada in 2012 for his degree in animation. It was also around this time, or maybe even a little before that time, that Unknown was working as an animator for the hit fighting game Skullgirls. I don't know the exact timeline of these things, but considering Skullgirls was released in 2012, I'm guessing this is why he started to drift off of DeviantArt when he did, and also why he chose to collab with another artist during the Burning Avalanche on OCT. He was probably working on making that transition up to Canada and slash or building a portfolio to apply for his position on the animation team for Skullgirls. He did some sort of animation internship at Six Point Harness during his time at Sheridan College. And if you're unfamiliar with that animation studio, they made cartoons like Wow Wow Wubsy, El Tigre, and The Looney Tunes Show. Which show he worked on though is beyond me. I couldn't find his name attached to anything from Six Point and I assume that they probably don't give their interns any credit on things. It also could just be I didn't look hard enough. Either way, he received his animation degree from Sheridan College in 2016, and from there, he worked on the My Little Pony movie that was released in 2017. Some other notable works of his animation include the Carmen Sandiego reboot, the Miraculous Ladybug movie, and Has Been Hotel, to name the most famous examples. His LinkedIn profile also mentions he attended Blue College from 2018 to 2020, which I believe is a Brazilian 3D animation school, probably to obviously brush up on his 3D animation skills, and you can find a few of his animation samples floating around the web under his real name. Very Disney-esque and very interesting mashup of 2D and 3D. And that pretty much concludes my findings on Mr. Unknown Person. There is one last thing though I would like to note that I found floating around when I was looking up references in the Castle of Nations wiki. The top reference led me to this Google Doc that I believe was compiled by a Brazilian fan of Unknown. I'm assuming her name is Isabel based on the contents of the doc but it seems she took the time to email Mr. Unknown and ask him personal questions and compiled all the information she found onto this doc. And according to the translated, copied and pasted email response she received from Unknown, it seemed like he was receptive to answer her questions since he doesn't normally get a lot of other Brazilian fans asking about him. According to Isabel's information, he was making about $4 million a year as an animator. There's also quite a few broken images on the Google Doc, but strangely this one image from Nyan Neko Sugar Girls is like, the only one working? I really hope that doesn't mean that Unknown is the person behind Neon Neko Sugar Girls. I highly doubt it, but that would be absolutely wild if he was. But yeah, those were just some final pieces of information that I found out. Now, I will also say take Isabel's information with a grain of salt because she didn't really provide screenshots, unless the broken images were screenshots, but I have no way of verifying if this information is actually correct or if this interaction really did happen because you know how it is being a young fan in the fandom space. While the interaction could be genuine, I do have to question it considering I tried emailing the email provided on the Google Doc, but it bounced. That could be for a number of reasons though. It could be that the email never existed, the email got deleted, or Carlos just doesn't want creepy fans like me emailing him about random fandom shit. But anyway, that is pretty much it on the Unknown Person story. I really felt like making this video because Unknown Person is just an artist from my past that I find myself revisiting once every couple of years. 
years because he just had that much of an impact on me. And for other people who grew up with his works in their childhood like me, I know he had a huge impact on them too. For example, another artist I follow, Night Margin, is completely obsessed with Castle of Nations. And if you don't know who Night Margin is, she is the co-creator of one of my favorite RPG maker games of all time, One Shot. Side note, if you have never played One Shot before, I highly recommend it. You get to play as a little cat boy. Nothing bad happens in the game. It's not sad. What are you talking about? Play it. Play it. I'd also like to add that when I was looking at old Castle of Nations content, I was also surprised to see that the fandom had been revived really recently. This series from like 2007 has found yet another home with young fans on TikTok in like 2023-2024. That's like so freaking awesome. It's probably like the same feeling of like when boomers back in the day saw kids be into like ACDC or some shit and like you know the boomers are just like <laughs> You're into the classics too, eh? Yeah, that's how I feel. And I know a lot of people have super negative views on aging and stuff. Ew, aging is so like icky, Ugh, the passage of time. But I feel like the coolest part about my aging experience is looking back on the people I used to know and seeing where they are now. I didn't mention this before, but another DeviantArt animator who had a huge impact on me as a kid was this guy named Zurel, who now has a YouTube channel and posts his animation on there, and is also in the process of making his own animated series. And it's just super cool to see how he has grown since the DeviantArt days. And then there are other artists too that I used to look up to who are doing something completely different now. And that's not a bad thing. That's like freaking awesome. It's just super cool to see how life can carry you in so many different directions. But it's also comforting to know that the internet has provided a space where you can revisit some of your online childhood by using the Wayback Machine and you get to experience that all over again. Honestly, kind of getting teary eyed just thinking about it. <laughs> but anyhow, I have yapped on long enough. I keep saying that I want to make my video shorter and somehow um, they keep not doing that. I really thought this video was just going to be 10 minutes max. I hate myself. Anyway guys, if you thought this video was interesting, please give it a like and consider subscribing. I do whatever I want on this channel, but I feel like lately I've been really leaning into really niche online culture niche content. I said niche twice. So if you're interested in any other content like that, please do let me know. Were you from the era of Carl and Climber and OCTs? Do you remember watching that all unfolding or are you a new fan? If you have never heard about this guy before or any of these things, um, what did you think? Did it sound like a cringe as time? Time, or would you have liked something like that now? Let me know in the comments below. Oh, sorry, one last last thing. I'd also like to note that just as Isabel's Google Doc states, OCTs are apparently still a thing and you can find a few running on Twitter. So if you're an artist with some free time to spare and you know, you want to get your creative juices flowing, uh, you might want to check it out. Okay, I really gotta go now. Thanks for watching. Bye. Hello, Carl. I too am Carl. And this is my son, Carl Jr. Hey,